10 Tips for Reading Aloud to Your Blind or Visually Impaired Child by Matt Kaplowitz. The single most important thing that you can do to make your child a strong reader is to read aloud. Studies show that the bigger a child's vocabulary when entering kindergarten, the bigger their chance of success. So our job as parents is to expose them to words and build as much vocabulary as possible during their formative years. And did you know that children's books are three times richer in vocabulary than normal conversation? But children's books rely heavily on pictures to convey information. So a blind or visually impaired child doesn't learn much if we just read the words. For example, Close your eyes while I read you a page from the popular children's book, Dragons Love Tacos. Hey dragon, how do you feel about spicy taco toppings? Open your eyes. Look at all the information you didn't get. Facial expressions, body language, colors, sizes, and feelings. So our job is to convey all that information and make the reading experience positive and fun. On this page, we see the great big red dragon, and he's laying flat on his back, and it looks like he has a tummy ache. His legs are sticking up in the air, and his tongue is hanging out of his mouth. He is miserable. So here are my top 10 tips for reading aloud to your child. They'll help increase vocabulary, literacy, and listening skills. They'll also make picture books come alive. Number one. Choose the right book. Pick a book with a character setting or theme you think your child will like. Two, make reading a family tradition. Choose a regular time and place to read together every day, but not at bedtime. You're trying to engage their minds, not put them to sleep. Three, take your time. It's important to convey the richness of each page and make sure your child understands all the words, concepts, and emotions. Four, on each page, before you read the words, describe three or four of the main objects or characters. The best way to describe a picture is to go from the specific to the general because that's the way children who are blind put images together best. So on this page from Goldilocks, we'd start with the girl and expand from there. There's a girl wearing a beige dress with blue on it. She has big bushy golden hair and she is walking down a path that is surrounded by a lot of large trees. Further down the path in the middle of the forest, there is a house with a door and three windows. If you wanted to introduce a shape, you could also add, the roof is shaped like a triangle. Then you read the words on the page. Remember to include colors in your descriptions. Color is part of our world and one of the major ways we identify things. So this information is important to blind children. Five, use vocal expression to model emotions, social cues, or distance. You can use your voice to show distance. In addition to character voices, use your voice to demonstrate how emotions sound. But I want you to sound like it's dangerous. Do not eat those tacos. Six, describe and model facial expressions and body language. If a character has a surprised look and your child doesn't know what that is, model it for them. Let them touch your face and feel what it looks like. A great way to develop your child's listening skills is to let them help you tell the story by asking questions about what happened. On the bed is the little girl with all the bright golden hair. What's her name again? Goldilocks. On that page, how many dragons were there? Uh, they were two. Correct. Who knows what colors they were? Bella? Red and blue. Red and blue, exactly. Eight. Use tactiles. If you were reading Dragons Love Tacos, you could give them taco ingredients and have them describe the differences in shape, size, and texture. It's bumpy. Bumpy, that's great. Nine, ask simple questions that explore feelings and foster empathy. If somebody came into your room and broke your chair, how would you feel? I'd be angry and like wonder who did it. Maddie, if there was a stranger sleeping in your bed, what would it be like for you? Um, I, I would go, ah! And last on the list, when you finish the story, don't just close the book and say, wasn't that a nice story? Discuss it with your child and explore the larger issues. What was the story about? If you were in your house and you wanted to go in somebody else's room, would you just barge in like Goldilocks did? No. no. What's the polite way to go into that other room? Well, 
I might say, can I please go to your room? And those are my top 10 tips for reading aloud to a blind or visually impaired child. It may seem like a lot to master, but don't be put off by it. Just find the three or four main things on each page, read the book and ask questions, and you will really open up the world to your children.